Greetings, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about conducting a buffer overflow on a server 2008 install as described in Security Bulletin Microsoft 09-050. For this particular lab, we'll be using an install of server 2008 32-bit SP1, and the download for this particular install is available inside the lab. But regardless, you have to have the 32-bit edition for Server 2008 SP1. Once we have our installation package or the ISO image for Server 2008 32-bit downloaded, we can begin the creation for the virtual machine using VMware. And we begin by just going up to File and clicking on New Virtual Machine or clicking on the tile that says create a new virtual machine. Either one will launch the new virtual machine wizard. We click next and now we're going to select the installation disk image using an ISO and we're going to browse on over to where we saved the download for our server 2008 32-bit ISO image. Once we have selected the correct ISO image the new virtual machine wizard will identify it, and in this case, that is Windows Server 2008 was detected. We click Next, and now we don't have to worry about the product key because we're going to use the trial version. We're going to give it a user-friendly name. We're going to type in the password, and then we're going to select the box for logging on automatically. Once I'm assured that all the information is correct, I'm just going to click Next. And from here, we can give the virtual machine a user-friendly name, such as Server 2008. And we can also select the location for which we want to store the virtual machine. I like to keep mine off of my C partition. I like to put them onto an external partition so they don't take up as much room. So I've gone ahead and given my virtual machine a user-friendly name of Server 2008 Target. I have stored it onto my E drive inside of my directory for virtual machines inside of a new folder called Server 2008 Target. And then I click Next. We can leave the default for the 40 gig for the disk partition. And I'm going to store this virtual disk as a single file. I click Next. And this is my confirmation page. Now, this is the last chance I will have to go back and to make any changes. I'm also going to check the box to power on this virtual machine after the creation, and I click Finish. From here, the Server 2008 installation process begins, and we only have one particular window that we're going to worry about, and when we get to it, we will restart the video at that point. So the installation process will stop, and it will ask you for a product key. But we do not have to have a product key, and we don't need to tell it to automatically activate when it logs on for the first time. We can uncheck that box. And we can just say Next, and that will start the trial period. And for this message that pops up asking you what do you want to do, or when do you want to enter the product key, you can say No. And we can begin the installation process again. We're going to go ahead and select the standard. This is for the uh, full installation. So we're going to select Windows Server 2008 standard full installation. And we're going to click Next. Now we have to select the box that says I have selected the edition of Windows that I, ha that I purchased. And we click Next. And this begins the copying process. From this point forward, the installation process will complete on its own and it will restart a couple of times and when it's done with the installation it will automatically boot you to the desktop with an automatic logon. Once the installation has completed the VMware tools will begin the installation process. Go ahead and allow that to complete and then we'll move on with the rest of the video. Once the VMware tools have installed, the machine will need to reboot, and when it does, it will come back up and we'll have access to our USB devices, our clipboard from our host machine, and we'll be able to go full screen with our video. Now once we have a clear desktop, we can begin by going to Start, and we're going to click on Control Panel, and we're going to go into the Windows Firewall. And from here, we're going to click on Allow Program through the Windows Firewall. 
And where it comes up with the user account control, we're going to select continue. And from here, we're going to go down and find file and printer sharing. Check that box and say apply, say OK. And now we can close out the firewall management console. Now, since this export is designed for a file server, 2008, we have to create a file to share so that we can enable the SMB service. So we're going to go to Start. We're going to go into Computer. And underneath the C drive, we're going to right-click anywhere inside of the white window. We're going to go to New, Select Folder, and we're going to call it Share. Once we have created the Share directory, we need to right-click on that particular directory and then select share from the context menu. From here we're just going to type in the everyone group. We're going to search for that and we're going to add it and we're going to select share. We're going to allow the access to the user account control by selecting continue and the share will be created in just a moment. If the share process seems to be taking too long, look for a hidden message that may have popped up behind the share being created window and see if that is available for you to go ahead and click on where it says uh, do not allow this network to be shared publicly. Allow it to be only a private network. All right, so now we have created the share and we can tell that this is a share because we have a two user icon. Once the share is completed, we can open it up just by double-clicking it. And we can right-click inside the white window anywhere. And we're going to go to New Rich Text Document. And we're going to type in Top Secret Plans as the title for this document. Pay particular attention how the name of the document is actually worded. I've actually used underscore underscores between each of the words. This helps in the location of the file across the network with a Linux machine. Once the document inside of the share folder has been created, we're just going to go ahead and open it by double clicking it. And we're just going to type in the phrase, these are the plans. Once you have something typed inside of the document, you can go ahead and go to file and do a save. And then you can close it out. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and confirm that we have network connectivity on our local network. And we're going to do this by going to Start. And in the search bar here, I'm going to type in CMD. It's going to be a command prompt. I'm going to type in IP config. Check my IP address. And I have an IP address of 192.168.145.129. Now that I have discovered the correct IP address for my installation of Server 2008, I'm going to go to my Kali machine, I'm going to open up a terminal, and I'm going to attempt to ping this new Server 2008 installation to ensure that we have network connectivity. So from the terminal of my Kali machine, I have typed in ping 129.168.145.129 and that is the IP address assigned to my server 2008 installation and we're going to see or check and confirm that we have connectivity and we do get a positive response back and to break this sequence I can just type in control C and I'm back to the prompt. We're ready now to begin the lab and the first thing we're going to do is discover the network using Nmap. So we begin by using Nmap to scan for all hosts that are currently on the 145 network. And I'm telling it that I want you to scan the last octet of the subnet mask for all 255 hosts. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And in just a minute, we will see the results of the scan. So we've discovered all the hosts that are currently on the 145 network. And you can see that by the results, it's a pretty simple scan. So we're going to step it up with another Nmap command to get some more interesting results. So from the previous scan results, I have chosen the IP address of 129 as my next scan target. And I'm going to use the Nmap command-st 
to look for all TCPIP ports that may be open on the, this particular target. And I'm now going to go ahead and hit enter. And in just a moment, we'll get those scan results. So the scan has came back, and we have the results. And we're looking at three particular ports of interest. First port is 135, 139. And in particular, port 445, which we know is used when the SMB service is installed and running. One of the most useful NMAP options that we have is the dash capital O, which allows us to determine or identify the operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 192 address again, and I'm going to use the dash capital O option, and hit enter, and we'll see what comes back. So the scan results do come back, and they are inconclusive because we don't have enough information to actually determine that this is a Server 2008 installation. But we do have other options that we can use to scan and further confirm our suspicion. In this next part of the lab, we're going to fire up the a Metasploit console, and we're going to use one of the scanner that is available up inside of the MS console to check the machine further and confirm that it actually is a Server 2008 installation. To launch Metasploit, I'm just going to go to my terminal prompt and type in MSF console, and I'm going to hit enter. Give it a moment, and it will load up the MS console for me. Once the Metasploit console has completed loading, we're going to go ahead and type in the use command and we're going to use a scanner called the SMB underscore version. So I'm going to type in use space auxiliary forward slash scanner forward slash SMB forward slash SMB underscore version. Then I'm just going to hit enter. And now we have to type in some options. So once we have told Metasploit the scanner that we want to use, notice that the prompt changes. Now we have to go in and configure the options. To figure out which options need to be configured, we use the show command followed by the word options. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And we see what options have to be configured. Going across from the top underneath the name, we see that there is the R host that must be configured. And if you look underneath the required, it will tell you yes or no. We also see what the description for that particular option is. So we're going to type in set so that we can set the option for the remote host and we're going to type in the IP address that we want to check for an SMB version. The command is set space our host for remote host space the IP address of the target. In this case that's 192.168.145.129. Now I'm going to hit enter and give it a moment and it will come back uh, with another prompt asking me to go ahead and run or launch this particular scanner. To launch the scanner all we have to do is type in the run command and hit enter. And in just a moment it will come back with the results. And here we see that the host is running Windows Server 2008 standard SP1 which is what we wanted to know. We can confirm that this is the correct version just by going back to our target and at the search window we can just type in WinVer for Windows version and we can hit enter and we'll get a pop-up window letting us know that this is Windows Server 2008 SP1. So now that we have discovered that we are attacking or we have a target that is Server 2008 we need to find an exploit. So I'm going to type in the command back and that's going to take us back one level and now we're going to do a search for 2008 and I'm going to type in search 2008 and we'll see what pops up. From the results and you see there's quite a few we have to scroll down and everything is in alphabetical order by the way we have to scroll down and find the exploit for the Windows SMB MS09 underscore 050 underscore SMB2 underscore negotiate underscore function underscore index. That's the actual export we're going to be using. Once I highlight that, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And we're going to move back down here to the prompt. And I'm going to type in use. 
and now I'm going to paste what I copied and we'll see that the prompt changes. If you would like some more information about this particular exploit, you can back off one level and just change the word use with info and you'll get all the information you ever wanted to know about this particular exploit. Again, we have options to configure, so we're going to use the show options command. Once I've typed in the show options command, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And we see that we have to configure three things, the remote host, the port, which is already done for us, but we've also got to configure the local host, which we'll also do. And we have to select a payload. So for my remote host, I'm going to go in and type in the IP address along with the set our host command. And now I'm going to hit enter. And that's complete. The local host is the Kali machine. And I know mine to be having an IP address ending in 132. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for that. For this particular lab, we're going to want to create a reverse host with our victim so that we can run some commands and exploit it to its full potential. And for that, we're going to use a Metapreter. So I'm going to go ahead and use a Metapreter reverse shell payload. I'm going to go ahead and type in set payload to Windows Metapreter reverse underscore TCP and hit enter. Now the first time you run this particular exploit, it may go ahead and blue screen or cause your server 2008 to reboot, which is part of the characteristics of a buffer overflow. So we get that denial of service. But once it comes back up, you should be able to run the command again and establish a Metapreter prompt. So we're going to go ahead and type in exploit. And now we hit enter. The Metapreter prompt is the signal that you have successfully delivered the payload. And that brings us to the conclusion for this short video presentation. But do continue on with the lab as there's, there's a lot of good post-exploitation left to do. And I want to thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in my next online video. Thank you.